Hurry up, here we go. It's actually a nice day, I think. I think it's a semi-blue sky, a little bit of ho haze up there. But it is, it's gonna be a sunny day, I think. Good morning, good, good morning everybody. <laughs> so, we've just missed um, oh, the vegetable man. I took a screenshot of him. He, he just left a few minutes ago. <laughs> That's his new time, it seems. Oops, hang on, where are we? Okay, let's get this up and running. No kegs this morning. Next door, I don't see any. No, I can't see any kegs out there this morning. The bars and stuff are, are jumping. Last night, Sunday was not so bad because, uh, you know, mostly it's Friday night, Saturday night that are the main, uh, the main party times. But there, was plenty, there were plenty of people out here last night. The paper is out, yes, just for one person this morning. It's uh, Sugisan. She's up there today, and she's doing the printing of the Kyoto Journey print for April. The proofing, you saw some of the proofing here, the, the cherry blossoms thing where the heron egret is standing. Proofing is all done, and she's now working on the first batch. There will be three printers doing three batches. We've capped this series for the moment at about 200 subscriptions. We'll probably be opening it in a couple of months once we get our sea legs ready and we know how our, our printers are, are scheduled. But at the moment, we've capped it about 200 prints. So we're doing three groups. She's doing 72 sheets. Aishikawa-san will do 72 sheets, and somebody I haven't decided yet will do another 72 sheets. And we've also, we've opened up the Hokusai series, which means I've got to get busy. So you're going to probably see me printing. It might be Thursday, it might be Saturday, I don't know. You'll see another batch of printing on there. Hokusai subscriptions are open again. They're not filling up. We're going to let in another 40 or 50 people, I guess. I'm not sure. Enough for one more batch, and then we'll, we'll shut it off for a while again. And daylight saving, yes. Sorry, daylight saving. I don't know. How does it work? For you guys over there, you're now having to stay up an hour later, or you get... I don't remember how it works, because we don't change, so it's not me that's changing. It's an hour later now. Okay, so for the Europeans then, who are normally doing this at midnight or something, it's now going to be one o'clock. So this is tough news for the Europeans then. I'm sorry. I really don't know what I can do about that. I think we, we, every year we, we bring up this topic. We talk about it every year, I think. You know, one idea would be for the three streams we do each week, the idea is there on the table that one of them I could do an hour earlier, the Saturday one. The Monday stream today and the Thursday stream, I would have to cancel going to the pool to pull it an hour, hour earlier. But my pool pass doesn't work on Saturday, so the Saturday stream could be, if I set my own alarm an hour earlier, the Saturday stream could be an hour earlier. Or would that just make it too confusing for people over there? I don't know. Feedback. Feedback. It's a piece of uh, no, mulberry bark. We were chatting about it in the shop yesterday. We had <laughs> the stories pile on. We had a strange weekend. On uh, no, Saturday, was the, ex with the exception of when a single customer comes and drops like $100,000 or something like that. With the exception of those days, yesterday was the busiest single day the shop, uh, Saturday, was the busiest single shop. Saturday was the busiest single day the shop has ever seen. And this never happens in March, mid-March. It happens in April, of course. So we're already, as far as count goes and as far as customers goes, we're already in April. So because Saturday was that big, it was, I, I the number, whatever, it was over 300,000 yen, prints disappeared. Because Saturday was that big, we got on the phone, we called in an extra couple of staff for Sunday. <laughs> You know where the rest of the story is going. We had one customer the entire day. <laughs> you never know. It's a shop. It's a retail shop. You never know what's going to happen. No, it wasn't a single person. Well, yeah, people can. People spend 100K at once. Yes, uh, actually, in yen. We're talking yen. That's not rare at all. The Saturday for us was 300,000 something. And Sunday, there was one customer. <laughs> Just picked up a couple of prints. So. 
So it's okay. So we had extra staff here. So we had lots. We had some. I went upstairs, got some flea market stuff that was ready and waiting that, that had just been received. I opened the packages and we spent the day packing, packing flea market prints. We know we're not going to sit here, you know, wiggling our thumbs. We spent the day packing prints and uh, chatting about different stuff. And they were asking me about the, the mulberry fiber. You know, I went up to Iwana San's place, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I got some mulberry up from upstairs. This is dry now, but I put it in the water for about an hour. We looked at it, and I, I was trying to explain to them how the, the chiritori works, you know, the source of the, the condition of the mulberry when we get it from the supplier. This is, this is how mulberry comes to a paper maker. Remember, we're not making paper ourselves, but this is how mulberry arrives here. You can see there's brown spots and stuff all through it. There's all kinds of bark spots that once this, this thing here, all this dark, the dark parts have to be pulled out. There are also areas where there's some black uh, fiber from the outside cover is still left. They have to be removed all the way through it. There's bits and pieces of, uh, of stuff that have to come out. And at this stage, it's impossible. You can't sit here with, with dry fiber trying to, try to pull spots out of it. It has to be... Uh... How many sheets in this piece? I don't know. In one piece, good grief, I don't know. 20 kilograms of this stuff will make us enough paper for 1,400 great waves. 20 kilograms. That's a single cook. The cook you saw happening in the last newsletter. If it was all going through for great waves, it would make 1,400 great waves. Okay, it's going to be carving today. It, I had intended to do some, uh, some sizing today. But funny, even with all that time left over yesterday, my own schedule got confused, and uh, I forgot to uh, pre-soak the glue, so I couldn't uh, do the sizing this morning. So we're gonna we're gonna carve. This is um, Okada-san's signature, reversed, of course. This is the last block for the surfer girl. <clears throat> it's a very stylized signature. There's no way I would be able to read this if I didn't know what it was. It's very, uh, it's very much a signature. But then in the West, too, there's lots of things like that. If you, if you don't know what the signature says, you know. Okay, let's find the spot here. In that sense, Japanese signatures and Western signatures are no difference. You know, if you didn't know what it said, you wouldn't be able to read it. So. Looking good? Somewhere around there. What's the question? What's the difference between doing it as a hobby or as a job? What's, what, what kind of question is this? I don't know. I can't answer. <laughs> when it was a hobby, I did it in every spare minute I got. And now that it's a job, I do it in every minute that I've got. That's the difference, I guess. I don't know. The diff main difference is, as when I did it as a, as a hobby or as an endeavor by myself, I was only responsible to myself. Now I've got, I guess, 30, I guess, don't know how to count them, 30 employees. That's the biggest difference. Payroll, having a payroll.
It was a fun weekend. Uh, the busy day was fun because it was so busy. And then the, the quiet day, once we'd realized what was going on, we just enjoyed ourselves, you know, drank coffee and chatted. And I said, packed uh, hundreds of prints, you know. Just had a pleasant day. I'm not worried that the shop had a really down day. We don't do our, you know, we don't survive day by day. We're having a very, very good year. So the fact that yeah, the day, the day was quiet doesn't doesn't hurt us at all. It was just funny more than anything. <laughs> We interviewed a, a potential new staff member. A lady uh, has been answering. We, we've had little ads up here and there looking for more staff members because come April, we still need more people to help in the shop here. And we interviewed a lady yesterday. She came in and it's funny. Part of the interview, I'm telling you, we're desperate need because we're so busy here. We need people. And the place was like, it was like Death Valley yesterday. So she's hearing my story about how busy it is and how much we need people. And meanwhile, they're all standing there. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Has there been any change in the number of Japanese customers we get? Well, again, we have no Japanese customers per se. Now and then, Japanese people walk in the shop and look around and maybe chat for a bit and then leave. But very, very, very seldom. It's, it's a rare occasion when a Japanese person, a person resident in Japan, picks up a print. They, they really don't, don't know, are not interested in our work. So. Uh, Also, somebody's mentioned here, sitting in the chat, it is confirmed now, next Saturday. Uh, today's Monday, the stream, there'll be a stream Thursday, probably I'll be sizing. Next Saturday stream will be the guest stream with Kapusin from the British Museum. We'll set up the, uh, the other camera, we'll put her on the chair here, she will be monitoring the stream. So next Saturday will be the guest, guest from Britain, from the, the British Museum. I think she's probably going to sit here for the whole stream. I think, you know, we weren't sure whether to ask her to drop in a bit later after I was up and running or whether she should sit. And I think she'll probably come just before 8 o'clock. So she might be here for the, the entire thing. Very, very nice lady. Very pleasant. Very knowledgeable about her stuff. You know, I made some mistakes. I kept calling her. And when we were making the video the other day, I kept calling her a curator. And I guess there's different terms and different words that are used and they're not used. So she kept correcting me. I'm not a curator. I'm not a curator. So she's a research scientist at the British Museum. Now we use these words differently. There's something else, probably she and I will probably chat about this on Saturday, so maybe I should save the story. But <laughs> it's, too, it's too rich not to tell it. We get this thing where I'm talking, where she and I are talking about this thing, and I'll say, well, the copies of the Great Wave that you've got in the British Museum. And she says, they're not copies, they're real prints. And I'm, I'm saying, well, no, no, this is how we use English. I mean the copy, the, the, and she wants to use the word, the impression of the great wave that we have there. And it's just the same way. That I guess the, the professionals use words in a certain way, and laymen like me will use a word. And for us in English, we use the word copy not, well, we sometimes use the word copy to mean a reproduction. This is a copy of something, as in this is a clone of something. And we just mean this is, this is a copy. Here's one copy of the print. Here's another copy of the book. Here's a copy of the book. You know, it doesn't mean it's copied, it just means here's one example of this thing. But this is one of her, her uh, what's the word, her, her triggers, you know, because in their terminology, when they're doing research and, and writing papers, they use the words much more carefully. So it's, I know, it's not that it's jargon, I think, it's just that using words in a professional way and using words in, a, in an everyday casual way. <laughs> so, so probably on Saturday, almost certainly, even if I try and remember this, I will end up making this mistake. I won't call her a curator, I'll remember that. But I'll say something about this copy of the print and she will, you know, smoke will come out of her ears and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so it's good fun. She's, she's, I, know, I, I don't mean to imply that she's some, something hostile about this, but <laughs> it's obviously one of her pet peeves. You know.
she found some wonderful examples. You know, we were talking about this whole project of carving hog size prints, uh, hog size designs. And the massive question with any of these old prints is how much of the taste of the image is the artist designer and how much is dependent on the craftsman who made it. And it's a vast question, unanswerable with a single word or phrase, obviously. The designer clearly is responsible for the, the look and feel, you know, the picture, but then the craftsmen, the printers, the carvers are responsible for the, whatever the, the look and feel. It's, it's really a, a, a hugely interesting relationship tied together, you know. And she brought some things. Absolutely, we'll talk about them on Saturday. And I'll, I'll get some examples into the computer so I can show them to you while we're talking about them. She's found a number of examples that for once and for all clearly, absolutely show th the amount of, of taste and touch and feel provided by the carver. It's a little bit against her side of the arguments. You know, Dave here has always been saying, the craftsmen are responsible for most of it, whatever the word most means, you know. And most people are, don't believe that. They think that the designer, Hoxai, is responsible for most of it. So she's found some examples from uh, some books she have in her collection there that clearly show where one design, where the design drawn by the designer was split into two pieces because this is how a certain type of books were made in the old days. And she's got some examples where given one design, from clearly from one designer, was split into two pieces for carving the left-hand side and right-hand side, and it must clearly have been given to different carvers because we see a, a part of the design that flows across from left to right and yet is carved in a dramatically different fashion on the left side and the right side. And all I can say, I look at this and I think, there you go. This is the perfect documentary evidence as to how much the carver's taste and feel went into this. You know. You'll see. We'll, we'll show you the examples. We'll talk about this next week when she's here with visual examples of this. You know. I'm missing your, uh, yes, yeah, we did, we did, we talked about this in the octopus, in, the octopus print, yes, the lettering, the lettering was clearly carved left and right by a different person, yes, so we've been here before, we've been around this, uh, this topic before.
It's been quite a while since I've had a chance to do some peaceful carving. I don't remember. Weeks and weeks ago to show. When was the last carving I did? On the uh, Hoxai print, I don't remember. Someone's asking how did I learn to read write the calligraphy. I have a certain level, very low, of reading calligraphy. I have no ability whatsoever to write calligraphy. What we're doing here is a reproduction. I'm acting here as a carver. I did not create the original of this. This is the signature of the artist, uh, the, of the print we are making, the reproduction. We are making a reproduction of the Okada Surfer Girl. This is the print. These are the test prints. And in one corner of it, down here, over the water here, will appear the artist's signature. And that's the block I'm carving right now, which will be printed in this area of the print, the bottom left corner. And then somewhere on the print, probably over on the right-hand side, we'll do our usual embossing. It will say, Design Okada Yoshio, and it'll be in Japanese. It'll be E Okada Yoshio Hori Buru, me, because I carved it, and then it will have the printer's names. We'll do our usual embossing over there. So this is the last stage of carving for this, this print, his signature. Someone says, is Dave watching the Oscars tonight? It's not my world, I'm sorry, without wanting to be sort of, uh, I don't know, pretentious about it. I, I don't go to movies these days. I don't see movies, so it really isn't something I would understand what's going on. You know, I don't understand the nuances. Or If you haven't seen the movies, I guess it doesn't make any sense. So, so is that what's happening right now then? I see. But I did see, that's interesting, somebody mentioned the Oscars there, and it did, something did come up in my news feed. I don't remember where I saw it. It would be yesterday or the day before. Somebody was uh, writing about legalized gambling, and I guess it was in America or somewhere, different states of the U.S. This was a U.S.-based story. And I think somebody was talking about there seems to be a plan afoot to have gambling on pro wrestling. And when I saw this story, I thought, Gambling on pro wrestling, how can you do that? Because it's not like an actual contest, right? I thought that stuff was pretty much, you know, scripted and things like this. And how do you do gambling on something when it's scripted? But this was the plan, and the story I read used as an example. It said what they're planning to do is they do it like the Oscars. I guess there's gambling. You can go to Vegas. You can place your odds on who's going to win the best picture and stuff like that. And yet that stuff is actually scripted. The answers are already known inside those envelopes. So how do you protect a system where people are going to gamble on something where the answer is actually already known? <laughs> I, I don't know how this works. Uh, maybe if they've got it figured out for the Oscars, they can also figure it out for pro wrestling, but I don't think I'd be putting any money on something like that. So. <laughs> No, just whatever. I, I don't watch movies. It's something. Somebody says, what movie do you personally enjoy? The movies I've seen over the years have just been movies I've seen with some excuse. You know, like my kids wanted to see Totoro, so we went with my kids to see Totoro. So check, I've seen that. I don't know when Sadako and I used to go for dates, when we just met each other. We would now and then go to a movie. I just, I don't. It's... For some reason, it's just not something I'm interested in. I don't really know why. I, don't know. I have seen Star Wars. I did see 2001, back when it, that stuff came out. Maybe, I don't know if I can say this without maybe upsetting people. I don't really know. I, I travel on maybe twice a year. I go to Canada and come back. So twice a year, I'm on an airplane over there going back. And of course, the seat backs all around now these days have movies. So whether I like it or not, there's, you know, the guy beside me, you can't see his seat. But through the crack between the two seats, you can clearly see that one and clearly see this one. So all the time I'm on the plane, there are two movies, whatever, playing in front of me. And they play another one and another one and another one. Now, whether I'm reading my book or just sitting there doing nothing, your eyes cannot stop looking. When something moves, your eyes go to it. That's how human brains work. So I have quote unquote seen through, you know, tw twice a year I see through some of these, these movies, you know. 
And although I can't hear it, I don't know the script, you don't know what's going on. I don't know. I just don't want to get into trouble. I don't see anything there <laughs> worth spending the time on. And if I tried tonight to sit down and watch a movie, like if you guys convince me, no, Dave, you've got to try this, try this, try this, watch this movie. If this happened that I sat down tonight to try and watch a movie because people have convinced me to do it, don't bother doing this, I wouldn't be able to do it because I'd be so consumed with guilt. I should be working on my next YouTube. How can I sit here watching this dumb movie when I should be working on my next YouTube video? So the, the guilty conscience thing. No, someone's asking, have I seen the classics, Casablanca, Kane? No, I, I've seen none of that, nothing, nothing. It's just, that's, that's a part of the culture that I only know by osmosis. Like, I know what all three of those movies are about, but have I sat down and actually watched them? No, I'm sorry, no. So someone says, superhero nonsense. That's what I see in the airplane, you know. Bang, bang, boom, bow, bow, just, just chasing, chasing, shoot, 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 shoot. And no, thank you, no, thank you. Someone's asking a zoom. I don't know if we should get closer because I'm moving this around a bit too much. Should we go closer? Can we go closer? I don't know. We can try, but it comes with a risk of moving out of the frame. Something's going on up in the air today. I don't know. Have I seen Sharaku? No, nothing like that. No, no. I would, I would just get upset. There's no way. There's a new movie recently, I think, about Hokusai or Hokusai's daughter or something. They'd have to take me out in a, in a straitjacket. I'd be shouting and yelling at the screen. No, 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 no. Yeah, John's right. Casablanca is something everyone should see. It's the culture. I get it. I, I'm not arguing the point. I'm not arguing against movies. Yeah, no, I, I'm not, not in any way arguing with you. you know. Just... As I said, you know, there you are, there's your example I mentioned a minute ago. You're convincing me I should watch Casablanca, download it, whatever, tee it up. I, I can't do that without the, the grotesque, you know, I should be doing something else. I should be making content, not watching content. I've only got X years left on this planet and i got to get busy. laughing or crying, feel sorry for me or feel like I'm, I'm silly, I don't know, you know, I'm, I can't help it, I'm sorry, whatever, you know. This is not some confession, this is just simply describing who I am, so whatever. I am actually happy with myself, I'm not, uh, you know, so be it, <laughs> this is who I am, I don't know.
I did think about that, you know, to, to stay on the same topic for a moment. The idea that that time in the airplane, I don't actually end up being very productive. I've got the plan every time. I'm going to work on that part of our software. I'm going to work on the next video script. I have this plan every time. But it never, it recently just never happens. Just the distractions, distractions, distractions. So I never actually do get any productive work done on the airplane. So it might not be a bad idea just to sort of give up. Get on the airplane and say, okay, this is eight hours you're going to lose. Don't feel guilty because you know you can't be productive here. Watch some stupid movies. <laughs> I, do, I, guess, I guess I should do that. I don't know. I suppose so. Can you see Casablanca on an airplane? <laughs> Nanda. I could make it my guilt-free time, you know. You know it's going to be a wasted time, so go ahead. There is another part of the story, though, you know, and this is related to my own YouTube work and being on TV and stuff so many times. I mean, there's, there's been documentaries made about me here in Japan. I've been on TV. I was going to say thousands, I can't say thousands, many, many hundreds of times over the years. <clears throat> the cameras have been here, blah, blah, blah. And whether it's this experience or not, I'm not sure, but it makes it really, really hard for me now to watch a movie type stuff without thinking, oh, the mic is right there and there's the thing. And you know, In other words, I can see how it works, I can see behind it. So. It sort of spoils it. It's hard for me to, to lose, what's the word, what do you say? To lose yourself in the thing. Because like, you know, I know what's going on. There's the, the guy cranking the camera <laughs> or whatever. Suspending disbelief, you know, I get it, I get it. But having said that, having said that, Dave says he has a hard time forgetting that this is a constructed thing, you know. And yet, I've probably told you this, when I did see Up, when did I go? Sadako and I went to see Up, that, that Disney thing, and I was crying. So here's Dave saying, oh no, I can't suspend to leave, I know how this is made, and yet those stupid pieces of plastic that people draw it on, <laughs> flip, I start crying. So of course, there you are, I'm being hypocritical, absolutely. Dave says he can't spend disbelief and he's reaching for the tissues. We can have this contest as to how hypocritical I can be on any given one of these streams. <laughs> I'm liking this calligraphy, you know. The curves are nice. They're not classical calligraphy. It's interesting. This guy, it's, this is show-off calligraphy. I know, what I mean is, I know, you know, you, we've got this, you know, I can write my name in script. And then you can write your name with a sort of curly thing at the end. And there's this florid script that we used to see if you, if you look at the m printed manuscript of Beethoven Symphony or something. And the Beethoven has all these curly B, B, E, E, whatever. You know, there, there's, there's lettering and there's script and then there's show-off script. And Okada-san here, it's not the normal way somebody would sign their, their name. He's, he's, whatever, it's the way somebody, an artist would be expected to sign a name, whatever. It's not normal. It's, it's showing off a little bit. It's nice. The curves are clear, beautifully curved lettering. It is what it is. It's not an actual signature per se. And nor, nor, I guess, should it be, of course. You know. But it's fun. It's pleasant to carve it. It's unlike anything else. You know. This is not Hokusai's name, for sure.
speaking of movies, how's the AI generated script? I've forgotten about that. That's the same thing. I'm sorry, yes, yes. I start something and then have trouble continuing it. I should give it another try. Yes. Finding, again, I'm sorry, finding the time to play with that. I just got uh, out of mind for a while. But yes, yes, yes. I'll forget now, but maybe if I remember when I read this uh, chat over at lunchtime. My apologies to not keep that flying. I wonder though, I haven't uh, been on that website, the A Open AI. Do I still have an account or did they switch to a pay to play you know, version? When I signed up for Open AI a couple of months ago, it was just anybody could sign up and put your name in and you could play with it. But is it now still free or do you have to pay? So it could be that I go back there this evening to try and do the next version of that script. It could be that it says, sorry, uh, give me your credit card number, you know. So I, I'm sorry, I've, I haven't kept my, I have kept that up, I'm sorry. We have been kind of, kind of occupied. That's my excuse for everything, isn't it? It happens to be true, but it's still there. Son, is it one of the ninja boys with his bicycle? Yeah, it's one of the ninja boys arriving for work. <coughs> they are doing really, really well. You know, they are busy, 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 busy. The downside of their success now is that when they do their ninja game, it's not two or three kids now. It's eight, nine, ten kids in a group, and it's much less fun. Much less fun. You'll still have an account, so nothing's changed. Do I do I have to pay for it now or not? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. We'll find out when I get when I log in tonight. So There's something else that's happening as a sort of a side, side effect of the busyness of the shop these days. There's so many people coming through now most days, and uh, you know, fans, YouTube viewers, whatever, people that know us. And in the old days when we had the print parties, it would be very common in the first print party of the day, the people did the print party at 10 o'clock, and they finished up at uh, 11 or so, looked around the shop, and they're leaving here just before noon. And always, 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 they would ask us, where's a good place to get lunch around here? And it was, so, so we, were, we were on top of this. We had a little restaurant map that we had ready. It was called, uh, I think, David's Choice Restaurants, <laughs> the places that Dave goes to. We had this little map prepared years ago. Well, the, the pandemic took care of that. Uh, almost all the places that were on my restaurant list are now gone. There's been that much change here in the past few years. And then in the past few years, I myself haven't been eating in restaurants. So the restaurant map that we prepared here and our knowledge when people ask us, where should I go for lunch? That knowledge is gone. But what's happening now is people are still asking us, anybody who comes in the shop around that time of day, 10, 11, 12, whatever to one o'clock, <clears throat> they will then say, okay, good. Yeah, where should I eat around here? And I myself have lost that, uh, I've lost that knowledge right now. We don't have this. So it's, it's become apparent though that we really have to put this back together because everybody asks us and they want recommendations and they want to know where to go. And uh, we don't have this knowledge anymore. 
So I've got to, I guess, uh, I've got to, what's the word, knuckle down, stop going to the convenience store so much, and start going to some restaurants and get this knowledge back up. There's a plus and a minus here. A dramatic change in restaurants in Japan happened when the Olympics came in the 2021 uh, two seasons. A great number of restaurants were forced to go non-smoking. So it will be actually easier for me to now prepare a restaurant list because there's many more places I can go into because there's non-smoking. Right? So it's time for me to get uh, send them all to Imahan. I, John, I can't do that. They're going to spend 10 times more than they should pay for a bland taste. It's got a big name. and Maybe a century ago they were important. I mean, when you say Imahan, which one? There's three. There's been a double Norenwake. It, for those who don't know, John's recommending a, a, one of Asakusa's most famous, in quotes, uh, classical restaurants, a uh, sukiyaki type restaurant. And they had, some years back, they had a split. Part of the family took off, used the name. The original family still uses the name. Lawsuits, fights, you use the name, you use the name. And one of those has since split. So there's now three Imahan restaurants in Asakusa, all claiming to be the one and only original. So some saying the Japanese are proud isn't even there anywhere that would not be good. I know that's sort of what we do. We just say, look, just close your eyes, drop your finger on the map and go there because you're going to be okay. It's not quite like that, but generally, yes. Generally, yeah. The one by Kapayashi for Sukiyaki. Kapabashi. I'm not sure what you mean, John. There's three Imahan in Asakusa here. One of them is on the street that leads towards Kapabashi. Is that the one you mean? They're claiming to be the Honten. That's the brand new one. Isoichi is just around the corner. He's been in here. He came in here, oh, when was it? I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. He came in here and he wanted to talk with us about getting a woodblock printed wasn't a menu. He wanted some kind of thing for his customers done by woodblock print. I don't remember the exact request he had. We weren't able to do it because it turned out that what seemed simple to him would have used a lot of resources and cost a lot of money. So it didn't happen. But uh, yeah, the guys in here were a very pleasant young man. We weren't able to, to do what he asked, what he wanted. So. I've never been in there. Again, because pre-Olympics it was smoking. It was a bar and full of smoke. And nowadays I guess it's perhaps a non-smoking place. They're just around the corner off Hopidori towards Sensoji Temple. Questions, questions, I can't catch all this, my God. <laughs> One thing we have been doing for a restaurant then, when, when we ask them what kind of food do you want, and they're like, they, they haven't decided whether it's tempura, udon, or whatever it is they want. There is one place we have been recommending people to go to in the Richmond Hotel, the international side, the newer Richmond Hotel, just one block away, in front of the Don Quixote store. There used to be something called Marugoto Nippon, which was a place that had food stalls from all over Japan. It's changed now. It's now become a Uniqlo. <laughs> But upstairs, they do have a restaurant floor. And what they've done with it, they've called it, uh, I forget, Yokocho or something, the back alley side street. They're trying to do an imitation of one of those back alleys in Shinjuku where there's a bunch of little small sit-down outdoor restaurants, you know, yakitori and this and that and this and that. So they've imitated that indoors. 
and the fourth floor of the Richmond Hotel building across the street here is a restaurant, a guy, uh, you know, a street. It's a fake street with uh, seven, seven or eight, I forget, seven or eight little type of restaurants. They're the type that you would find outdoors. And one's takoyaki, one's uh, yakitori, one's this, one's that. They're, they're all different, different stuff. So we send people usually over there so that in one area they can get their choice. downside for that place is it is noisy. They're trying to create a vibe, and which means all seven places are playing loud music of a different type, and it's absolute chaos. There's a vibe all right. The vibe is, I want to get out of here. Were those people looking for us? The people that just said that they're closed. Are they looking for me? They didn't hang around. Someone says, am I from Ireland? No, I'm from the uh, northern part of England. I'm from Yorkshire. Not that I spoke any Yorkshireese, but no. I'm from England. Grew up, the first formative years were in London. So whatever core formation of my character happened, would have happened the first five years in London, then Canada, and now Japan. From my point of view, I have no accent. You know, Canadians are certainly, you know, people, Canadians who are not part of the, like Newfoundland or something like that, typical Canadians, we would think of ourselves as not having an accent, so. Yeah, Canadian it is, yes. And being Canadian has a one little extra side benefit here in, in the business we're in. We get tourists every day, of course, from all over the world. And it's fun. They come in and chat. And it's fun sometimes after hearing somebody's voice for a couple of minutes. I'll say something like, I'm hearing a UK here, right? You know, because they're obviously British. And they'll say, yes, yes, yes. And they'll say, give me a minute. You're maybe Midlands, are you? And they'll say, Birmingham, right on, you know. I don't always get it right. Absolutely, I don't always get it right. But you can tell the easy ones, Lancashire, Birmingham, London, you know, you can tell those. But the ones that we always, always get wrong, I will say, I'm hearing Germany, right? And he'll say Switzerland or Austria or, you know, Germany maybe, something like this. So it's the classic group that we get wrong all the time. Australia, New Zealand is a tough one. Uh, the other day I, I tried to pin somebody in New Zealand and he was Afrikaans. And once he said that, I, of course, yes, yes. We don't hear enough people with that to let that get into my mind, you know. But even when I get it wrong, there's a safety valve here because I then say, well, how about me? And they, of course, if they, unless they've seen our YouTube videos, they say always, they say the same thing, American. And I can, I've got a double punch on that one. I can say, well, no, what you're hearing is... Uh, <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> but then for the British people, <laughs> we have fun. If I've, if I've pinned them at Birmingham, I'll ask them, what county do you think I come from? And they're like, county, county in America. And I say, no, and I will say, I was born in Britain, what county? And of course, it's completely impossible. There's, there's no trace whatsoever.
Yeah, Vivid says she doesn't think I sound American, but that's because you know the backstory. People that are just coming off the street, bang, hearing my voice. America, to say that I'm American is not an insult. I'm not upset about this, of course. It's not a bad first guess for where I, where I come from, you know. Also, too, I'm not really sure, I will never know myself, how much of my own Canadian uh, mannerisms, accents and mannerisms, have been affected, because I did. I was educated for three years in Britain before coming to Canada. I went to a, a little prep school for three years, so I could read and write, and, and I had a, I'm sure I had a very strong uh, upper-class British accent at the time we came to Canada. And that's, of course, 99.x percent gone now, but I think there's probably roots in there. The phrases I would use, mannerism, something like this, must, I think, be affected by the first five years of my life, I think. I would die to hear a tape of me speaking at five years old. My God. I mean, the report card we've got somewhere in the drawers, the report card from that prep school, it had elocution as one of the courses, you know. So David was taking elocution studies at five years old, you know. I mean, that's the way it was in a place like that. The, the elocution comment wasn't just a comment by the teacher. Dave's elocution is excellent. It was actually a class. It was a thing. We had the usual thing, the arithmetic, English, elocution. Boxing was in there. Boxing was a course. I've got a grade on that little report card for boxing. This is at five years old. Talk about the end of empire, my God. That school is now gone. I've tried to find it, but it's gone. It is in an Ome accent. Someone's asking, what's my boxing grade? I don't remember. That the report card is in a box somewhere in Ome, so I've got no idea. I'd love to bring that out. That would be so cool for a show and tell. Dave's report card from his first two years in the prep school. I was four years old, five years old. I'm remembering this, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Elocution, D minus. Boxing, F. <laughs> I don't remember at all. <laughs> no, it wasn't an Irish school. It was in, uh, it was in uh, near Leightonstone, a little bit east of Leightonstone, maybe Walthamstow, I don't remember. And it was Newnham College Preparatory School. Life, what's the word? And alternate, alternate, alternate realities. You know, alternate universes. What on earth would I be doing if we had stayed in Britain? What would I be doing? Prime minister or bum? I've got no idea.
I'm not watching our time very carefully. Are we okay? What's the time? Nearly nine o'clock. Okay. Well, I'll keep it. It looks, looks like we're going to have good timing. I won't quite be finished this by 9.15. And thanks. No problem. <coughs> Someone says, have I ever broken the tip off the blade very frequently? As regular viewers of this know, we break the tip. We, haha, royal we, I break the tip all the time. So far today, it hasn't. Now that we've talked about it, it could perhaps. Why aren't my hands covered with scars? There's absolutely zero risk here. I'm keeping behind the blade. It's all under control completely. It really doesn't... Uh, I can't say I've never drawn blood here. I think we. I, I stabbed myself with a knife here a while back. But, uh. Oh, I y'all know son. Oh, it's Monday. I was thinking Monday. that's right. It's She won't be here because it's the weekend. It's not the weekend. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. That's right. I had totally forgotten. I had it in my mind. This is how dumb I am. I had it in my mind that I understand won't be here today. But of course, it's Did Monday. Did you go swimming today? Yes, of course I went okay, swimming. So it's a normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Just Monday. More than, see, I'm, I'm, there's more than one railroad track in here. Half the railroad track is I understand won't be here. Somehow I'd got that idea. But you are here. Yes. Yes, so, I am here today. And your box, it's, you know, you got a lot of stuff in your box, but so it's not unmanageable. There was, you know, there was only about 50 orders okay. over the weekend. Okay. You know, we did the flea market thing on Friday. So that's all been going on. Anybody who ordered from the flea market Matsuri over the weekend, you're going to hear from Ayanasan today or tomorrow, I guess, whatever. So some, some weekend, weekend, so, so. Yeah, How was your weekend? Uh, I'm just being stuck in, you know, uh, in oh, the house. Because, because of the <laughs> pollen, she won't go I'm outside. So scared. I, I really? Just, you know, I, I went to see my friends, but like we're staying inside. You Come know, a bit closer, kids, a bit closer. Yeah. You know, I didn't go outside. Like, I have the feeling it's not so bad this year. You know, the newspaper said the pollen count is really high this year, but right. I'm not encountering a whole lot of people who are floored by this. Well, I talked to my friends and their family. They're saying this year is so bad. Really? Uh, yeah, they don't, like, even those people who don't usually have symptoms, yeah. like, you know, yeah. usually, they still get, you know, um, I don't know, runny nose or itchy eyes. Okay, but out in Ome, when I was there, like, well, what, two weeks ago, the people there, it was a thing, but not a really big thing, and Ome's right in the middle of it, you know. I so. don't even recognize Ishikami-san's voice anymore, because she, Cause of her point? nose is like... There you are, <laughs> no, keep quiet, okay. <laughs> so, right. But you don't, oh, you got your glasses, yeah. I got my glasses. <laughs> She's got well, her glasses. The real problem is, okay, forget about pollen. Bird flu must be really bad this year. I went to... Um, Five, six supermarkets, all convenience. Ah, uh, no eggs. Yes. Yeah. Yes, no yes, eggs. Yes. This is not just Japan. I think it's America too, right? I know the, the chickens and the stuff, the bird flu, so they're killing the chickens and egg prices are going way up or something. Right. In Japan right now, this is a super crisis. Mm -hmm. no, no eggs at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. shocked because yeah. there are there are three essential food like in my food diet: one eggs, two potatoes, three onions. Uh, I need them to to live. I can live without rice. I can did, live did without wait, wait, bread. Wait, wait, wait. Eggs, <laughs> eggs potatoes, potatoes, and onions. Yes. Are you from Ireland or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not essentials, but just my favorite, favorite food. Okay, yeah. okay, without okay. Without them, just though, my life sucks. I really <laughs> haven't been following this so much. You know, I did read, there was something in my newspaper that what they've done, uh, they're instructing the largest you know, egg farm, the chicken farms. What they're going to do, they're going to break them up. Uh, I think in the name of efficiency, this is probably happening all over the world. They've been making these gigantic chicken farms and egg farms, you know, where they, they, they go as far as the eye can see, there's these huge chicken barns. But now because of this flu problem, these kind of businesses are either voluntarily or under administrative guidance. They're breaking up and sort of you come in the west door, there's one barn, one truck, one this, mm -hmm. and the east gate has an east barn, east truck, and there's no communication. There's fence and stuff and employees don't go back and forth. So they're breaking up the massive farms into smaller groups. And I think this is not just Japan. I don't know. Nice, they're making idea. recipes for you. Uh, recipes for so, me. So, so, uh, with onion, egg, and, uh, and potatoes. So, so, so this, they are, so, uh, they're always in my, you know, yep, my recipes. Yep, yep. <laughs> 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 okay, this one, you said that. I think you must have said, did you say, I can live without rice, did you say? Because yes, the people yes. are really shocked about this. I don't eat rice at night, so like I usually eat rice for lunch, but no rice at all, no rice at all in the morning or night. Is so. this a specific reason or, or, or what? No, it's just rice makes me full. Or carbohydrate, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't care about like, how much calorie I take or how much, I don't know, um, and it goes to an This is not a problem for you, <laughs> no. But yeah, it just uh, makes me full, so I don't eat rice 
much compared to other Japanese. But just a minute, if you, instead of rice, you're going to eat two potatoes or something, I mean, really, it's the same thing, the carbohydrate. <laughs> no, I'm not being sarcastic. Yeah, it's, 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 I totally understand. That's why I think I like to eat uh, potatoes instead of rice. It's just the taste or texture-wise. I like okay. potatoes, and I cook two, three, like, side dishes, mm -hmm. or ma main plus side dishes. So just side dishes make me full without rice. Plus miso soup, so I'm eating a lot actually. Okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so you got this, uh, uh, I know, eggs. If you find any eggs at the convenience store today, do you? I won't, be, uh, <laughs> I won't be thinking so much about that, I'm sorry. So I'm a, in 7-Eleven, the only eggs are what? There's egg sandwiches, which I don't touch or wouldn't, you know. Eggs are must you put on raw eggs. I know, but in the things that I buy for I dinner see, at 7 Eleven, egg is probably. that section. No, I don't. I wouldn't buy an egg sandwich. What else? I mean, maybe oyakudon ah, so might be sometimes in my rotation. So maybe there's no oyakudon tonight. I don't know. So. Okay, if, if you End of human civilization. The chickens are gone. So. <laughs> so, no chickens. <coughs> okay, so. right, see you later. Okay, I got a few things to chat with you once we get started. I think, you know. I, did, I didn't process the incoming orders per se, but what I did was a couple of people, they, they sent an order in and they asked for manual payment. Uh, now, because it's not processed, it means it doesn't get taken off right. here. Correct. So we, we could have sold the same thing in the shop. So what I did was anybody who ordered but asked for manual payment, mm -hmm. we took them out of the shop okay. so that we won't double sell it. Okay. And then one of them, they actually they went to PayPal themselves and put in their own calculation. Okay. So I did process that order uh, okay. to get it run through. Okay. Okay. But most of the stuff over the weekend, I didn't touch. I just left it. I didn't send replies yet. You'll Thank see you. it. When you see it. So. I was just worried about the manual payment. So, yeah. so okay. and we've pulled everything for shipping and all the large prints. We've already packed them. We had there was Ooh. no customers here yesterday. We had one one sale. That's all hey. on Sunday. On Saturday we had San Juma. Hi. And on Sunday we had one person. It was a beautiful day yesterday. It was a beautiful day. So, so what we did, we packed, we packed, we packed, we packed. We packed. So you, you can see, take a look at the shipping van, so you'll <laughs> okay. see. It's all ready to go. Oh, that's very helpful. Ready Thank to you. Go. <laughs> all right. Okay, sorry guys. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Hi. Talking about food. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Hi. Don't eat this. This too. Today is unmasking day here in Japan. It's March the 13th and a few weeks ago, maybe somewhere around the beginning of the month, the Japanese government stood up and finally made an announcement about the mask policy. Should we all take our masks off? Should we do? Do we need to wear them here? Do we need to wear them there? And the policy they announced was very simple. They said, starting March 13th, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Their policy was, we don't know what to do, so there is no policy, so starting March 13th, it's up to you. <laughs> so, so we've been canvassing, and I've seen there's been newspaper stories. The Federation of Business has been canvassing. The train companies are all getting together to try and decide what to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for us, we're going to follow. What seems to be the mood is... we. We know there's two sort of contradictory things. We know this had a real good benefit. You know, it didn't stop the virus, but it reduces the incidence of transmission. So all you can say that without much argument. So we know it had a benefit, and we know at some point in the future we really got to get rid of this stuff for, for normal day-to-day -day life. And where do you draw the line? So what we're doing here at Mokohankan is this. Starting this morning, we're going to actually make no change. We are going to be masked in the shop here when customers come in. If customers come in, we will not ask them to mask up. Just gonna, we're just going to fly with it. We have to learn how to do this. But uh, all the staff that I've spoken to, they at the moment feel more comfortable being masked. So the staff actually is going to do this. And you saw actually when she came in, I masked up. So for ourselves at the moment, we're just going to, we're just going to uh, you know, keep our own policy here. But customers are free to do whatever they want. And if they do come in with masks, we are, I'm not going to say anything, of course. I would guess, I know what's going to happen upstairs. Ayano-san works in a little room next to Aya-san and Marcella-san. And without my direction, I know exactly what's going to happen. They are going to mask up because in small, tight rooms, we do here still feel more comfortable with this. And I'm sure on the trains this morning, absolutely, 
I haven't been on a train, but I know the culture here, everybody will have been masked up on the trains. The only difference we're going to see here in Japan now is more and more people walking down the street will be unmasked. And in fact, I should have asked you, I should have talked about this at the beginning of the stream, so you could have done a survey. The people walking by outside today, have they been mostly masked up or have they been free of masks? I don't know. Here we are, one, two, they're wearing masks. The next two people, they are wearing masks. It is really, really going to take time for this country to, to shake this. And I think most people have the same feeling. Yeah, let's get them off, but we're in no rush to do so. We're in no rush. And it's not just corona, it's the flu, you name it, it's whatever. So the culture here has really changed quite a bit now in the past couple of years, and it's going to take us a while. Hmm. We had the masking culture here before corona, of course. It just simply meant that when somebody walked down you with a mask, nobody thought it was strange. But not everybody was always wearing masks. But look at this, it seems that most people... Well, here's one, one off, one off. It's on his chin. He's ready. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? 9.10. There's a bit more carving and I get to a show and tell. We do have show and tell today. And uh, institutions and organizations like, for example, theaters, the this, this sumo wrestling or whatever, I mean, there will be a policy. They will have thought about themselves. They will put a sign up and it will, I don't even know what it is. They will say masks, please, or it will say uh, free, free to choose. You know. Nobody's going to say no masks.
for the show and tell section today I've got a, a, a choice of a few different things to show and uh, I think what we might do a few days ago is it time I guess it's time let's just do it let's just do it let's start the show and tell a little was been a bit mixed up a few days ago I don't remember exactly when I had a, a book I showed you that wasn't woodblock prints it was paintings and drawings you know uh, sketches and uh, I wasn't really sure I had not seen it before I bought it I wasn't really sure whether it was useful or not <clears throat> and after buying it and looking at it on the stream the other day it turned out that that had been really uh, a really interesting uh, an interesting book even though it wasn't woodblock prints it was interesting for me to look at it and it turned out when I read the chat later that it was interesting for the people on the chat as well. We'd enjoyed that. Now, as it happens, that same seller on Yahoo Auctions had actually put up five different auctions. That little book we looked at was one of five auctions of similar books by the same seller. So after we saw that book and I saw how nice it was, I went back to his offerings and found that of the original five, I had bought one of them. Another one I had bid on but lost. It was a book of nature scenes. Another one was uh, already gone, and there were two left. So I bid on those other two books by the same, it, it looks like by the, the same uh, artist designer, and nobody else wanted them, nobody else bid, so we have them here. So I do have this. We have two more of those little books, similar to the one I showed you the other day. Shall we have a peek, even though they're not woodblock prints? I think so. It's kind of bizarre wrapping paper. What's he done here? I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. It's it's just it's a piece of wrapping wrapping paper or, or an old package he's used. I was gonna say ballet, but now this looks more like this doesn't look like ballet so much opera, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Let's open it. Looks like the New York Times weekend entertainment section. <laughs> no green tape. How do we get in here? Let's just carefully. You're never sure how people pack stuff. I think we're safe. Okay, it's okay. Yes, we're safe, we're safe. So, two more of those of little books similar to that one. Again, there's not a clue who this is. The guy who was selling these doesn't have a clue who this... Oh, I have to ask one. When I showed that book the other day, somebody here, was it, was it Tom 1060 or was it Fly Fish for Fun? Somebody was saying, Dave outbid me on that book. And I think there's a mistake, there's a confusion there, because that book I showed you the other day, I was the only person who bid on it. So I think there's a mistake. Oh, you got here. The sketchbook Dave won the last time was not the one I was bidding on. Yeah, it wasn't. So you must have seen something else. I'm sorry. Two more books. And we have a name. Hidetama. Hideo. How to pronounce this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It could be a made-up name or it could be a person's real name. I don't know. It's got embossing. Look at this. Cover the book. Cover the book has an embossed pattern. Hideo, but I think not with that dot there. I don't know. No idea. If I was going to guess, I guess I'd say Hideo, but uh, whatever. And I really don't know. There were a few pictures on the auction, but not very many. So let's just dig in. Do we need this light on or light off? Which is better? Maybe the light on is okay. I don't know. Let's have a look. And I think it's a mixed bag. It's going to be, I think, yeah, it's mostly nature scenes. The last one was uh, Chinese legends. This one is going to be 
nature scenes. And if they're all one side, the stuff I'm bidding on is nothing to do with eBay. Nothing. I'm not participating in eBay these days at all. Someone's asking about the embossed pattern. It's thick paper. It is very thick paper embossed heavily. Let's get rid of the outside mic. Is it the same guy as last time? I don't have them side by side. Very much simpler in scale. This looks like one of those school tejons that we see. Remember, we get the, the models for drawing for school students. I wonder if this is the same guy. I don't know. My first guess is this is perhaps a different person. I think these are a little, quite a bit more simplistic. Whether it's because it's a different topic This guy is good too though, you know, look at this, look at this. This guy is good at this. I know I, I myself have no, I never tried this. I have no knowledge of how to do this, but I'm always in awe, absolutely in awe of how much information comes from how little effort or how few brush strokes can create a world and create a mood with just dab, dab, dab with the brush strokes. It's no good me saying, man, I'd love to be able to do this because of course I've never practiced, I've never tried. So it's silly for me to say something like that. Mafalda, the young lady who was here a while ago, I don't know. A little bit too minimal, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, we got to zoom in. Or maybe if I put the light off, get this one better. Do you see it? There's actually rice there. There's rice and all. There are rice cakes there. He's done the rice cakes with opaque white. This is not really in the style. This is multicolor. There is white, opaque painting here to make the rice cakes. I think if I was guessing here, first guess, this is not the same person as the other book we had, I think. If I was just going to make a quick, fast guess. Whoa, whoa, totally different. What's this? Is this a different person? What's going on here? Is this a different person? No way does this match. It says Nigatsuchu, middle of February. Ikadu, Ikadu. I'm not sure I like this. This is a different mood completely. Look at this. This guy knows what he's doing. Maybe indeed it is the same man that we saw the other day. 
Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, that's almost photographic. Wow, color me impressed. Oh, here we are. They're, they're not single pictures. These are now like smaller sketches. A bird here. Is that, what on earth is this? Okay, gang, you're going to have to help me with this one. Is it a rabbit? Are there owls with such ears? Really? I'm going to have to stand off on that one. I don't have any idea if that's a real thing. No idea. To me, some of these look more clunky than others. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Clearly, too, also, this book the other book the other day, we couldn't tell, was it bound after the paintings were done? Because the painting went right down into the gutter. This one, we're seeing a space in the gutter. So I think he has painted in this book that was already bound. I am impressed. Look at this. Yes, sir. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Someone is asking about the vegetable man here. Just for one quick pop, interrupt the stream. This was five minutes before the stream started today. The vegetable man has come and gone today. For those of you who are interested. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? Okay, this is more of an experimental sketch. This is cranes, I believe. He's got a bunch of cranes here. Yeah, these are just experimental dabbings now. Just, just. It's a sketchbook. Oh, look at this, more cranes, more cranes. He's playing, he's just learning how to draw cranes. Oops, zoom out, Oop. pull out, push in. What? What it is a sketchbook. I don't quite get this one. It's funny, it's a bit paradoxical. He's so good at some of these and other ones look a really bit so clumsy. I don't know. Which way are we going? Here we go. I'm not quite sure about this part of the drawing. Did we really need that? I think it's the same picture, yes. I believe it's the same picture. Much more random sketchbook. Oh, what's this? Much more random, much more sketchy.
someone's guessing that this is a joint sketchbook. I don't really know. You know, I, w I would have no, no uh, way to do this, to say anything. I mean, it is a sketchbook, so maybe he's decided to spend more time on some of them and some of them just make a quick sketch, you know. I mean, it's, it's a sketchbook, so. Classic. Look at this. Look at this. Little scene, little hut, dead tree, and off in the distance, a bird. Let's see. How well has he done this bird? Look at this. But you try that. Look, at we're just getting the scale. There's my finger for scale. You try drawing a bird with a beak and wings and legs. You try that at that scale. Someone's asking about Mount Fuji. There, right? I think that's the page, the other page. Hang on one sec. I think that's a print through. Not print through, but bleed, th not bleed through. Yeah, it's the back page. So no, there's no Mount Fuji here. Mount Fuji is the next page. I think it's the same person, I guess, I don't know. Someone says New Year print, and that's sort of my little excuse for buying little books like this. You know, the books here, the package of these books was a thousand yen, so this cost me like eight bucks. And my excuse for adding these to our collection, even though they are not woodblock prints, the excuse is somewhere along the line we can use some of these for our printmaking work. In real life, it's a pretty long shot, but. Uh, Has someone found the name Hide, Hidetama? Is that the pronunciation? I don't know. I'm sorry. Someone's saying we should do some reproductions from favorite flowers of Japan. We have already. We've got three of those in our catalog. I've done three pages from the favorite flowers already. Shu Gyoku, the pronunciation. I this on my head. Oh, that for me that character reads as Hide. I don't know other pronunciations, but yeah, Shu Shu Gyoku. I'm not going to attempt this, sorry. <laughs> Andy the artist, I should do all of them. Yeah, like I've got nothing else to do with the rest of my life. I can't do everything, ma'am. I've got to I've got to choose my battles. I've got to pick my battles. Whole different bag, drawing a white bird, delineate, delineating a white bird by doing an outer outside of it. You don't draw the bird, you draw something outside and lo and behold you end up with the bird. That's got to be tough. Absolutely, that's got to be tough. You've got to do the body by doing darker pigment outside it. And then to do the neck, you've got to put the darker pigment outside the neck, but inside the body. 
positive, negative. This is, I think, this is stunningly difficult. This guy, whatever, whatever. This guy actually, I think, is probably pretty, very, very, very good at this. Is it the same design? I'm not sure. Okay, just a few more pages. Frank Lloyd Wright, Chinese house. <laughs> It's a mood. <laughs> There's no way all of these are successful, but hey, it's a sketchbook. It's a sketchbook. So was like, how do we get this book? This sort of book comes up on Yahoo auctions basically every day. I picked up these, not really quite sure why I got attracted to these. The first book, the one we saw the other day, I really did think there would be things in there perhaps useful for our work. And these ones now, I've just bought more in the sense that I just try and like to keep these books together. I wasn't able to get all five of them but uh, I now have three of this guy's books that were that were put together on auction. So, and we have no information. All I know is that two characters that was writ that were written on the front cover of this. This is all we know. I have no other documentation. There's nothing in these books. And perhaps, if this person was well known, there could be experts who could tell from the style who it is. I don't think we're looking at this. I think we're looking at just a simply an, an amateur, somebody who enjoyed doing this kind of work. If you were say, saying, what would you search to find this? If you were on Yahoo Auctions and you wanted to look for this, you could look for uh, maybe Genga, you could look for or you could just look for suiboku. If you typed in the Japanese words suiboku, it would turn up books like this. And with no exaggeration, there's no day of the week when there aren't objects like this on Yahoo auctions here in Japan. And shops, there's a shop uh, in Jimbocho called Oya Shobo. You go in the shop and it's floor to ceiling, cubby hole shelves jammed with all kinds of stuff, and he will have hundreds and hundreds of books like this. He's not cheap, and for a book like this, he may ask something like 50 bucks or something like this instead of the, the 10 bucks or so that I paid for it. But yes, if you're in Tokyo, Jimbo Cho, the place called Oya, O H Y A, Oya Shobo, would have many, many books and single sheets and drawings like this. This is not unusual or rare at all here in Japan. I think this is the last one. It is. Let's sign off. This is a nice one. Let's leave it here. Looking good. Looking good. Very nice. Very nice. So I'm sorry, it's not actually woodblock print interests like some of our show and tells, and maybe for the next show and tell, I should go back and try and get some more uh, hardcore woodblock stuff for you. But I think, I, for me, whatever, I don't care. I enjoy looking at this. I enjoy looking to see somebody who's done something really nicely. Would I ever use them for prints? We could do, but as again, we're just so full of work these days. If we were struggling around looking for things to do, this book would be a wonderful mine for us and we could go through and try and find things. But at the moment, we've got more projects than we can possibly absolutely handle. Okay, coming up, it's Monday. I'm off for three days. Thursday, I'll be here. I almost certainly will be doing a sizing stream upstairs. Next Saturday, Friday for most of you, will be the guest stream. And I'll Capuchin Korenberg from the British Museum, a research scientist at the British Museum, will be my guest and we'll be talking and chatting about the conversion of sketches, Hokusai sketches, into an actual woodblock print. Nuances, ins and outs of that. That's happening next Saturday. For me now, I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee and I'll see you next time. 
Thanks very much. A little bit windy. It is March, you know. This is what you expect in March. Make sure you bundle up, or though you could end up carrying your sweater because it's so warm. You've got to be ready for both ways. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye for now.